So I've already shown you how to create and publish a page, but we really haven't shown you how to add content into that page. So let's go ahead and show you how to add that content into your page now and kind of work with it a little bit more detail. Now, we've seen the title and we've seen we can add text and I can keep adding some text here. If I hit the enter key, you'll notice I get a blank line. And I even get my spell check built in here. Now, all of these are just plain paragraph tag. If I were to save this and view this online, I would view an HTML paragraph tag. But there's other things I can do. Notice if I click inside a page and highlight it, that I get this menu and I can choose to make something bold. Or I can make something italicized. Or even add a link. When I add a link, I have an option of choosing to open in a new tab. And then I want to click on the submit button and that will actually create the link for me. So I have some really basic editing tools within here. If I click on another line of text, I want to show you a couple other things I can do. So for example, I have here an option of moving up or there's a button to move down. Now, Right now, I can't move down. It's grayed out because it's the last paragraph. But if I move this up, you'll notice that it swaps those two different paragraphs. And now I can move up or down. What's nice is I can even do this if I have multiple paragraphs. Now, if I notice that since I selected multiple paragraphs, or as WordPress calls these blocks, I can move them together but some of my menu options disappeared. Some other things I can do is notice I can click on the little dots and I can drag the block to where I want it to go. So if I don't want to click up, 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 I could, in just that case, drag it all the way up to the top. On the far left-hand side, you'll know the paragraph symbol. Now, this is kind of an English symbol, so you might not have recognized it, but, but if you put your mouse cursor over it, you can see that allows you to change the block or style. And what that means is, for example, very easily, I can see here like, oh, here's a whole different type of block that I can transform this into. So, for example, I can choose to make this into a list. And notice it automatically becomes a bulleted list. In which case, I can then click on the number and create an ordered list. So a bulleted list generally is for things where the order does not matter. An ordered list is an ordered set of steps that need to occur as they are found numerically. I can even indent and outdent my list so I can have sublist if necessary. But I can continue to change this. I'm not stuck with only one change. So, for example, I can make this into a heading. Your heading is very similar to your page headings. Your page heading is going to be an H1 tag, typically. So we automatically show this as an H2, or a subheading 2. I can click on that H2, and I can force it to be an H1, or I can make it a lower level. So I could have multiple lines of text with headings and subheadings and then subheadings. Now, typically speaking, you're not going to have like an H3 without having an H2. That's just good practice. Some of these are a little less known. For example, a pull quote, which is generally a little bit longer quote or a quote that you want to stand out in comparison to a regular quote which is going to be not pulled apart aside, but you still want to write a citation for it. Notice you have an option there for a citation. And I'm going to switch this back to paragraph real quick. Now, when I add a new block over on my right-hand side, I have an option here. 
This lets me say, well, what type of block do I want to have? And these are the most common ones that you'll see. However, if you notice, I can choose Browse All. On my left-hand side, I get a large different type of blocks. So I get some text blocks where I can add, for example, code if I'm doing a technical type of website, or quotes, or verses, like a poetry type of verse. I can add media such as, for example, embed an audio player, or an image, or a gallery, which is a collection of images. I can even add, for example, a video. Now you might say, well, what type of video would I have? Well, I could then upload a video, and it needs to be an MP4 video. I can go to my media library, which we'll look at in more detail in a little bit, or I can insert from a URL. Now, if I don't like this particular block, I realize I made a mistake in adding it. I'm going to click on these little three dots here. And I'm going to choose to remove my block. Now, some blocks you can add, and it's a smart block. So, for example, if I post, in my case, I just posted the URL to YouTube. Notice that it said, oh, wait a second. You don't want just the URL to the YouTube video. Let me go ahead and add this block for you. And it created an embedded video to YouTube. So, I can do this with any YouTube video I want. So, it displays it as long as the video is enabled to be embedded inside of a web page. By default on YouTube, the videos are. You have to turn that feature off. While here, notice that I can add, write a small caption about this video. I have a few other options I can pick if I want. Or I can come over here to my far right hand side and see my block text editor. Notice that I can do things like, for example, add CSS. And what's going to show up here that I can change and modify is going to be dependent upon the type of block that I have. Now, clicking on the plus to add a new block, you'll notice that now all of a sudden I have different options. So WordPress tries to be smart based upon what things have you done recently or what things do you typically do. And it tries to pull items from there. I can do a search, so I can say, for example, image. And I'm going to choose this image here. And insert from a URL and paste the URL that I found. And you notice that the image comes up. So I didn't have to pull it into my media library. What I wanted to show was over here, my block editor, I can choose different styles, like the default or rounded and notice how it creates a rounded image for me i can set a default style here so how is it normally going to come up if you don't set one it goes to default or in this case it has the option of being rounded i have the ability to add alternative text or alt text which is used to describe the purpose and reason for having this image by default, I have the image sizes, but I can also reset this. I want this only to be 50% of my normal size, or 25%. Or maybe I want it to be the full size. Additional CSS classes, if I have those, as well as a title attribute. Now, title attribute is usually what happens if you roll, if you put your mouse cursor over the image, what will it show? So I have a lot of different content ideas and abilities with my tags. Some of them are going to be immediately accessible via this top menu here that you can see. Sometimes I'll need to click to have additional properties set up and use them there. And sometimes I'll need to use my property panel on my far right hand side. Additionally, I can come over to my top left near my WordPress logo and click the Add Block icon and choose a wide variety of different elements that are here. Now, in reality, this actually is not all of my different blocks that I can add. You might say, well, how could this not be all of them? There are so many. Well, 
because new content becomes shareable, new content types are available, you can use plugins if something is not listed in the blocks as it is. Now, a large number of items are available. We can add things from Reddit to Scribe to Kickstarter, etc. All very easily. But I can add additional items via plugins if those become available that way. So I have a lot of flexibility with how I'm going to add my content one block at a time. The really nice thing about this is when we go to create posts, we're going to use the exact same block editor. So if you've learned it for pages, you've learned it for posts. If you've learned it for posts, you know how it works in pages, and it's very easy to navigate and use WordPress in that manner.